and welcome to Coffee Talk Tuesday. I'm Shelley Stevens and I'm here with my co-host Trip. And our guest today is the lovely Alexis. Hi, Alexis. Hi, Shalise. Uh, Alexis? Alexis. Lexi. One name only? Is this like Madonna? Alexis, Alexis Ashworth. Okay, so two names. <laughs> very nice. You still go by Ashworth? Yeah, I do. It? What was that? Yes, I do. Okay. That's <laughs> Well, isn't it normal to know your guest's last name? Well, I, mean, I do know her last name, but then I was like, at the last minute, I was like, well, maybe she changed it because she's been through a lot in the last few years. And, you know, sometimes names change. Okay, I keep my name the same. <laughs> I'll have you know. Yeah, well, you're a guy. Guys don't change their name most of the time. Well, um, many people accuse me when I finally got married this year of adopting her last name. Since you probably should have. Yeah. <laughs> well. No one's looking to kill me, <laughs> but that's another story. So thank you for coming on the show, and uh, you look wonderful, and uh, Shalise has said many nice things about you. Yes, Alexis and I go way back. We've known each other for many, many, many years, and she's always just been an inspiration to me, and just she just had a birthday and turned 50. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Alexa. You know what's Alexis. really cool, Alexis? Excuse me. That fifty is the brand new forty-nine. <laughs> <laughs> it really, it's it's amazing. Now, uh, Alexis looks wonderful. And uh, what are your secrets for staying young? Being black. Zumba is where a bunch of very attractive people run around and run into each other or do something. <laughs> is that pretty much an effective uh, characterization of what it is? Um, no, no, the oh. last, last three months have been tough. I haven't seen, I saw Shalise once, <laughs> and seven other people in the last 15 weeks. So that can't be it. Maybe it's just staying inside, not getting too much sun these days. Okay. Well, that, that, that wouldn't be a, a bad strategy. So has the pandemic, pandemic been pretty rough on you? Oh yeah. Yeah. It's, um, I work from home, um, so, and I only have my kids half time, so when they're not here, it's just me, you know, 24 hours a day, seven days in a row. So it's a good thing I have a dog. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it's been very rough for people. People. People, people. People, people, <laughs> personage. Um, yeah. <laughs> those of us who like to get out and be with people, and are very social creatures, this has been really tough. And Zoom does not take the place of actual contact and being with someone and interacting. And then talking to people with a mask on is really difficult for me. Because yeah. you don't know, you know, you'll crack a joke and they won't see your facial mannerisms. And it, it just, this has been a tough period. <laughs> yeah, or when you see a friend that, you know, you haven't seen and a month or two and the first thing you want to do is give them a hug and you just go well wait <laughs> and you wave <laughs> <laughs> well and what's scary now we're taping this the last monday in june is we don't know what's going to happen i mean in the states where this thing is taking off again it is pretty unprecedented yeah so we could be in a situation in two months where the whole country needs to lock down again but there's not the that. there's no will to do it nope <laughs> and no and yeah. i'm i'm on so i think what happened with me is that i'm a very very much a people person and so really once they, i've I never know, noticed, that, never noticed yeah. that well <laughs> once they like lowered the restrictions i was like i'm free well a lot and of people who get out of prison feel that way <laughs> right exactly and i felt like i was in prison <laughs> they commit a crime to go back in not me I'm not committing a crime to go back in, and I don't want this pandemic to happen. And oh, they, really? That, I, you know, not that I, That's I an in-depth interview here. <laughs> Trip. <laughs> no, Thank you for not wanting that. that no, really I don't nice. want it, and I don't want them to lock us down again. And I don't want my kids to not go back to school in the summer, in the fall, because I've I've already had them now. What? It's been four months. Four months. Yeah, let me do the math. March, April, May, June. Yes, that is four, four months. Four months. <laughs> I'm glad you can count. Yeah. <laughs> you know, seven years in college was not wasted. No, well, good. 
So Lexi, what have you been doing to keep yourself entertained and not go crazy? Um, well, I started painting. Um, I have this new green color up on my wall behind me because everything was beige and I needed a little bit of uh, sunshine in my life. I, you know, when the whole pandemic first started and everybody started finally wearing masks, I probably made 100 to 150 masks. Uh, I tried to homeschool my children and then drank heavily and decided that was never going to be a good plan. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, let's get the let's get the order going here. Did you start drinking before you homeschooled your children? Well, yeah, but in the morning, so you'd get up and have a cocktail and then start to homeschool your kid. I, I I'm not a moralist at all, but I think you should stay drinking till after school. Just a thought. Well, they're not. <laughs> Sometimes I was thinking maybe if I just gave my kid a shot, it would calm him down a little bit. <laughs> so uh, I'm sorry focus. for those watching from Child Protective Services. We'll yeah. be posting all the addresses <laughs> afterwards. But uh, what people, what I've read and, and talking to people is that teachers, especially in grade school level, have never been appreciated as how much they've been appreciated the last three months. Yeah. Because what they go through is amazing and how they can take a group of kids and watch them for six hours a day is a number one, and but keep them to, active and, and teaching and we need to get, there are some raises that need to come out of this and yeah, absolutely for sure educators need to get, they all need to get raises. Yeah. And then firemen and EMTs need to get raises. Oh yeah. And I honestly think that policemen need to get raises too. Yes, indeed. And I was going to make a joke on that. that uh, but it's too soon. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. It, it, and, you know, there's so many people this pandemic who's affected. And the people that work in stores all day. I have a very, you know, I don't see a lot of people. But can you imagine working in a store every day and having I mean, literally a thousand people that you come face to face with? It's, yeah. it's, it's a scary time. Yeah. So uh, now that you've stopped teaching your kids and drinking on the same day, is it, are the kids right. doing better? Um, <laughs> well, it's no, summertime now. <laughs> there's, they don't, they've learned to like each other a little bit more. Um, but they get an opportunity to go, you know, see one friend in a park, six, eight feet away, wearing masks. They, they're not having any fun. No. And the idea of teaching youngsters about a pandemic is, goes against all rational thought. Yeah, and my kids are a little bit older, so unfortunately, I think they get it a little more, which has them a bit fearful. Yeah, it, when we see video of these parties, these super spreader events, it's scary. And I just read about one bar in East Lansing, Michigan, that 84 people got the virus from. Oh, my word. Yeah, and these things happen, and, and that's where it, it gets kind of scary. And kids, you know, kids want to have fun. And the idea of them not having fun for three months at a time is pretty difficult. I'm, I'm going to go on the other side of it for just a minute because I'm actually, <laughs> I, I'm not super strict with everything. Like I wear a mask when I go to the grocery store and I don't go there very often, but I do a lot of like click to shop and I get the groceries for my mom and all that stuff. But I'm, I'm not super scared of it. And I mean, I've, I let my kids, there's three friends that they have that they get to go play with and we'll like swap homes. But I mean, their parents, I, one of them's a nurse and uh, with a mom where my son is actually today. So she's a nurse and she, I don't know. It, it's just one of those things where I'm like, I'm not going to completely stop living. How do you feel about that? I feel a little bit better about it these days. Um, I know in the beginning I was really scared, but it seems to me if you wash your hands and you know don't cough or sneeze on somebody, you know, just like <laughs> flu or a cold, um, and you know wear wear a mask in like bigger groups where you don't know people and don't know who they are, who they've been with, if they've been physically distancing. I feel a lot better about it now than I did um, a couple months ago. 
And that's probably not a good thing now that we're seeing our cases go up. But I know that my friends and I are really safe. Um, and we all sort of, you know, make the same choices. Again, wash your hands. Don't go inside people's homes if you don't need to. I mean, I'd much rather sit outside, you know, on a sunny day um, in the summer than sit inside. So, but what, like in a case of Shalise being um, a jewel thief, she's finding it very hard not to go into people's homes. And so her career is such that, oh, oh, shoot, is this live? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't want to let that one out. And for, you know, for that, I mean, she probably ought to be wearing gloves anyway. Uh, oh, I do. That's the thing. Like, gloves and masks. So actually, now that I think about it, it's great right? to see public safety uh, and your career kind of mesh perfectly. Exactly. It's really convenient for me. Okay. <laughs> well, you know, we, we've learned something today. <laughs> we've actually learned about other careers that you've had, and that's fascinating. Okay. We made an oath. <laughs> okay. She was a long haul trucker, but we won't talk about <laughs> We won't that. talk about those days. Uh, <laughs> so Lexi, how yeah. does it feel being 50 now? It is um, weird. <laughs> <laughs> because I used to think 50 was old. You know, right. I was thinking was old. And when I was 40, people were older when they were 50. And I don't feel like I'm that older person. I don't think I'm mature enough to be 50. <laughs> but I like the idea of um, sort of feeling like I deserve more respect. Because I'm 50, so I'm just going to like lose all my filters and say what I need to. <laughs> like some crazy old <laughs> Well, well, you're actually really good with that and saying what you, you feel and you're involved with a lot of um, political movements and a lot of things that, that I love what, reading your Facebook post because you just put it out there. You're like, <laughs> well, and that's one reason why I wanted to have you on because, you know, we talk to people that are making a difference in the community and I feel like you are someone who, who you know, you, you just put it out there and you tell people how you feel and why you're feeling that way and you say it in such a graceful way and I just I just love it so good job with that what would you say is the biggest thing you make a difference in the community with um I love the volunteer work that I do at the homeless youth shelter um we just go in and make breakfast a couple times a month my friends um the women lawyers and Salt Lake put on a homeless youth prom every year. So there's a big dinner and a dance um, that they do in October. It's fun to be involved with that. Those kids are just, they're great people. They're so appreciative um, and serving them has just been a joy. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. That, that is a wonderful cause. And I remember um, when with Nevada Childhood Cancer Foundation, we would have, we had camps in the summer and sometimes kids would come back from camp and we wouldn't, no parents waiting for them. Not, you know, literally, and you'd find out that kids basically are homeless. And, you know, can you imagine going through cancer, going through a disease and really not having a home to go through? So in essence, that's one of the aspects of the homeless challenge that we have that doesn't get a lot of publicity, but it's a huge need. Yeah. Absolutely. I don't know of um, kids in our shelter with uh, major medical problems, but I, I'm sure they're out there and it happens, um, you know, and just like you hear about people with COVID, you know, being in ICU alone, I'm sure, especially when they're younger, that cannot be easy. That's yeah. scary. Well, we're going to take a short break. When we come back, we'll learn about a couple of your other jobs, aside from long haul, haul trucking and <laughs> Uh, uh, we'll be back. You're watching. What are we watching? Coffee, Coffee Talk, Talk Tuesday. Tuesday. We'll be right back. <laughs> okay. All right. Welcome back to Coffee Talk Tuesday. I am here with my co-host Trip and the lovely Alexis Ashworth. Okay, now that we've established the last name, that is wonderful. Before we went to break, we were talking about 
the homeless youth situation has everything that's happened at the Rio Grande and um, all the efforts by everyone involved in government and a lot of private people, have they helped? Are things better with homeless now? I don't know. It, we serve the same number of kids, you know, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It doesn't seem like the numbers have gone down. They do go down a bit in the summer because it's nicer. Um, but it seems like, sorry, my dog's right here. I'm trying to keep her off the screen. Well, uh, put her on the show. Yeah, Let's see. <laughs> She'll knock my phone over. She's 110 pound lab. <laughs> uh, is she the nicest lab in the world, i.e. a yellow lab? Yes. And oh. she is a very light yellow lab. And she is bigger than her dad. Um, like I said, she's 110 pounds. I didn't know girl dogs got that big. And uh, yeah, she just sheds all over. <laughs> I, my car still, my last yellow lab has been gone for four years but CNN's hair is still in my car. It is impossible. Yellow lab hair is impossible to get rid of. My mom has a yellow lab for a seeing eye dog. And it, uh, so she ri he rides in my car all the time and yeah, there's hair all over the place, so. But yellow labs are as close to the perfect dog as possible. Yeah. And I with Nevada Childhood Cancer Foundation, I had a puppy 12 years ago. Gabby is doing great for being a big lab, but. Every child who ran, we, we did an event where the kids would get to run a ceremonial lap around a baseball field with whoever they wanted. So all the, this was down in Vegas, all the characters from the strip shows, all the pirates from Treasure Island, the mascots from the schools, and every kid wanted to run with Gabby, who was a three-month-old yellow lap puppy at the time. And afterwards, it, I just, I've never loved anything more in my life. And then she ate my phone, which is what lab puppies do. <laughs> So, you know, you, you get some like, good with a bad. Don't eat the coffee table. And I'm like, why am I saying this? <laughs> I said it before in my life. <laughs> so getting back to the homeless youth situation, is, is there an opportunity for these kids to have their mothers staying at the center with them? How does that work? So these are kids that are 16 to 24. Um, and they have job programs. Uh, they have school. They make sure... Kids that, you know, can go to school, want to go to school, um, have the opportunity to be in school. Um, they have counseling programs. They, you know, they have a pretty strict um, curfew um, for kids that are staying over. There are times when the shelter's full, though, and they have to find other arrangements for, for these kids, maybe um, helping them find a friend they can stay with uh, for the night. So it can be, it gets a little tricky in the winter, but it's just a really great program and the staff is so supportive of these um, young people and it's a great place to volunteer. It makes you feel good. Is most of the staff there, are, are most of them volunteer based or do do they have like paid staff that, that work there? Um, our youth shelter is run by uh, Volunteers of America. And so there's, a, there's really great paid staff um, and the kinds of staff they need, counselors and um, social workers, you know, regular staff that just keeps the place running, admin staff. Um, but the food, the dinners, breakfast, lunches, and dinners are almost all volunteer. And oh, that is fantastic. And where are the shelters located? It's on 9th South and 4th West. Okay. And was this incorporated into the whole refit that the state, Greg Hughes as a speaker and everyone got, in, were you benefits of that kind of whole uh, shakeup? You know, I have no idea because I just volunteer there. Okay. Because <laughs> what happened is that the state of Utah and a lot of people like Mrs. Miller got involved and said, this is too big of a problem that we have in our mm -hmm. state. And it's, it's all over the West. I mean, it's, it's a huge problem, but that they tore down the road home shelter, built a new shelter down the street from us on 3300 and 9th West, and they've made a lot of changes, and hopefully it's for the good, but, you know, for a while there, to be down at Pioneer Park was a pretty ugly situation. Yeah. And they've cleaned that up a lot, but you've got to offer homeless people services that can allow them to then mainstream. Yeah, and Absolutely. Hopefully we're doing a great job with that. What, do you have a favorite story about a young person that you just bonded with when you were helping out down there? 
there was there was a young man that I met um, at the homeless youth prom about three years ago, and then when I would when I would make breakfast, he was you know he was there and he was always polite and um, would give me a hug and wanted to talk about how he was doing, and then it was about a year or so that that happened, and then he wasn't there anymore. And I was, got a little bit concerned, and I didn't know who to ask. So I asked one of the other kids who um, had been there off and on for a while. And he said this young man had probably gotten into trouble. And I was just heartbroken. I couldn't believe, you know, after how kind he was and how much it seemed like he was trying to work um, hard on himself that, you know, that would happen. But, you know, it does happen. And probably six months later, after I'd asked about him was another youth prom and he came back and he had a job and an apartment and he was gonna buy a car and I just started sobbing. I was oh, like, that's awesome. <laughs> that, so that connection really affected you when you thought that he'd possibly run into trouble and because to be homeless as a kid has got to be I mean, high school, junior high and high school are hard enough as it is. Could you imagine that situation where you don't know where you're going to be at night? No, I actually had a really hard time um, understanding homelessness for a long time. And it took me a while to really kind of see because I grew up poor. And, but I always had somewhere I could go. We always, you know, had something. We were, we were lucky, but I mean, I, I literally grew up on, on church food and food stamps and it was, it, it was a rough, a rough existence. And, um, but I could never understand being homeless. And, and it wasn't until recently when, when I really started, not recent, recent, but like within the last several years that I really started to understand that it's not the, the kind of problem it is and, and why it's such a problem. and the people that really just, you know, they don't want to be in that situation, but they, they aren't as lucky, I guess, as, as I've been to always have somewhere to go. And, and a lot of people are, are on the streets because they put themselves there. And, um, but that's another thing, you know, when you start to talk about addiction and everything like that, that, that starts to come into play as well. And, and that's a disease. And so, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's just, a to, to, think about children though in that setting it's just and, and the 16 year old is a child <laughs> like I mean they're you know young adults but at the same time they're still they don't they don't have the skills that they need to survive so it's really lucky that they have people like you Alexis that help them through those times and can bond with and connect with and look up to. And what By the way what is a typical breakfast there? Well breakfast can be Anything that you know, volunteers want to make. I, I do something that most people don't do is I bake for these children. Um, oh. So I usually will do like banana bread or blueberry muffins or German, you know, mini German pancakes or apple turnover, something like that. Because I feel I, I mean, I feel like baking. It's you know, giving somebody love anyway, and so when I can do that, um, you know, for a group of 40 kids, I want them to know that, you know, I care enough to, you know, make them something from scratch, from my home, from the oven, and uh, give them something delicious. That is lovely. Yeah. And uh, I do custom omelets. They start out as omelets, they always end up as scrambled eggs. Scrambled eggs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's it, how I, actually, I love to cook. The one thing that I cannot do is omelets. I don't, I can't do it. You know, what's funny is when you go out and, and you have breakfast at a buffet and they have an omelet station, I am in awe of those people. <laughs> I look at them and I go, okay, what are they doing that I'm not? And, you know, to be able to sit there and cook 200 omelets perfect in the morning. That, Maybe we should volunteer at the high end, <laughs> yeah. well, I, shelter so we can practice making that many omelets and then we'd be really good at it and then practice we our, do it all the time yes practice our <laughs> omelet making skills okay. <laughs> you really can't for these kids <laughs> <laughs> what else makes you really happy um my kids make me really happy and when they're not making me really crazy <laughs> right uh, the 
my dog, Lucy, is, um, I got her after the 2016 election because I need this emotional support animal. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> oh my gosh. This is my uh, favorite coffee mug. It's a picture of Donald Trump and Vladimir Putin riding shirtless on a horse together. <laughs> of course, it was said to me once that of course, Vladimir Putin rigged the election in 2016. He called Hillary up and said, don't go to Wisconsin or Michigan. So enough <laughs> said. <laughs> I always get my anti-Trump uh, uh, little dig in. Every time, yep, every I, time. I, 2000 election was tough on people. We had a guest in, a Democrat, whose name I've promptly forgotten, who's running for Congress here. And it's tough in this state because it's a predominantly Republican state. And though we do have one Democratic in the House, uh, McAdams, but it, it's, it's tough here. Um, so the you got a yellow lab out of the 2016 election. I think you did much better than the rest of the country did. <laughs> we, we got an orange badger. <laughs> I've interv I'm going to leave that one. I'm yeah, going to leave that one. Sorry, I've interviewed no. Trump before. And... It was when he was building his condo tower down in Vegas, and I got an interview with him. Oh, really? And yeah, he, you're looking at that hair, and, you know, <laughs> it's, it, it is really, it's it just, you're, you're trying to figure out, okay, it goes here, and then it makes a left, and then it makes a U-turn, and it comes back, and it was a windy day. My hair is blowing like crazy, and his was just locked down. I mean, <laughs> they could have dropped a beam off the 35th floor and hit him on the head, and I don't think it would have affected things. <laughs> A hard hat on construction sites. Yeah, exactly. He, he, he wakes up with a hard hat. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, what was your what was your interview about? So I hosted a show called Las Vegas Business News, which was a daily show. And he, uh, this would be 12, 13 years ago. Okay. And he was building the Trump Tower, which was a condo tower down in Vegas. And he, um, I worked with a guy who licensed Trump to be the uh, casino owner in New Jersey. And he did not have a good road. Casinos, you think it's just a question of opening up. And he wasn't a very good casino guy and actually bankrupted a couple of them. But in Vegas, they didn't give him the opportunity to run a casino. They, he just doing a condo tower. And, uh, you know, I think he's going to do really well post-presidency. Yeah. I just hope it's January 20th. <laughs> <laughs> Kalisa's grandmother watches the show and hates me. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, Grandma. <laughs> Again, every show. <laughs> well, if I can affect one person to vote the other way. No, I, I am. I mean, I'm. I'm with you guys. I'm. I'm not a fan. I just don't like to get into political discussions because I am very emotional about things, and I get really. I don't know. It, it's not, I'm not as educated as I probably should be in a lot of political things. You help me though. And yeah. Lexi, you're, you're big, you're big into politics as well. I do like, I do like the politics. Yeah. <laughs> so we've got a gubernatorial election now as a Democrat, I didn't register as a Republican to vote, but a lot of Democrats are registering as Republicans to pick out uh, someone tomorrow. And I, th I'm not, Spencer Cox seems like a nice guy. I've met him a couple of times. Um, Greg Hughes, I've met a couple of times, a nice guy. And then obviously the former governor, Huntsman. And then the tall guy who does the TV commercial seems like a nice guy. Um, are you voting tomorrow? No. Okay. Are you voting tomorrow? Uh, no, I did not change my political affiliation to okay. vote. In the <laughs> yeah, so we uh, will be voting for Joe Biden in... I have predicted, though, on the morning show, and this was a year ago, that Ronald, that, excuse me, that uh, Trump will not be running for re-election and that Romney will. And I'm still, the odds, it's 99-1 against, but with all the bad news that's coming out for Trump, I, if he thinks he's going to lose, and right now he's down in certain polls, eight points to 14 points, I don't see him, I, I can see there's a chance that he would drop out and just say the heck with it. Yeah, so he doesn't have to lose. Yeah. So that would be a we nice scenario. Hope. Yeah. Oh, now you're, you're taking out of your grandmother's will. I know. 
Yeah, well, she loves me. She already knows how I feel. <laughs> okay. Well, it, it, yeah, it, enough about politics. Yes, enough about that. But actually, and we're pretty close to the end of our show already. Yes. And oh, let, let me hold up my other cup. <laughs> You know, like, if the light hits Trump just right, <laughs> it's horrible. <laughs> so, Lexi, before we do go, what is a message that you would like to leave with our audience? Um, well, I don't know. I watch, only watched a couple of um, coffee chats because they either come on so early in the morning and I, you know, have to get my own coffee and probably a million things to do. Um, I think the message really right now is... And I, my hashtags don't work here because I swear in them, but really stay at home as often and wear a mask, wash your hands. Um, and, you know, even with your best friends, still, you know, you can talk across a picnic table that's six feet apart. Um, you know, let's, let's try to flatten this curve a little bit. Have we done everything in the beginning? We were supposed to be at zero cases on June 25th. Um, we opened up, we didn't all do all practice um, social distancing and you know this is where we are now so I'm hoping I that we can all travel again um, in ways that we feel comfortable you know either cars but a lot of people say that sometimes like restrooms open, aren't open at gas stations so I don't know how you drive in a car across country without that um, so I <laughs> yeah and we are actually driving from St. Louis to North Carolina in a couple of weeks, and I'm not in favor on this one. <laughs> that doesn't sound. Yeah, it doesn't. It sounds. Actually, I love road trips, so that does sound fun to me. <laughs> but here's the thing: we we have to wear masks, and I on the morning show tomorrow. I'm doing. We taped it last week, but I'm doing a thing on masks. And masks are a way to say that you respect your fellow human being because it's really not for you; it's for them, and that's the best way you can show it. And Shalise and I, actually, she's in Wendover, and I'm here in Salt Lake. So we are very distant. <laughs> Screen magic. <laughs> really is amazing. So. All right, Lexi. Well, thank you so much for being on our show today. And happy birthday again. You get to celebrate all month. So happy birthday again. <laughs> nice to have you on the show. All right. Thanks, thank everyone. You. We'll see you next week.